Today, we are going to be talking about power. I'm Brian Rump. And I'm Matt Garrity of Matt AG Digital. And this is the Kawartha Small Business Podcast. We have business conversations for the Kawartha commute. Uh, speaking of power, we have a very powerful sponsor today, and that is uh, Starting Point Digital Marketing. Uh, if you need some powerful digital marketing, but you're not sure where to start, uh, you need to reach out to Starting Point Digital Marketing uh, so that you can have the great digital marketing you deserve at a inexpensive um, in- rate designed just for you. That's Starting Point Digital Marketing. Uh, all right, Matt, uh, how was that for a powerful ad read? <laughs> It worked. It's all, it's all I think that our sponsors and our listeners expect. Just a oh. basic, adequate anything. <laughs> adequate, reasonably clear. Sometimes you mumble a bit. Uh, but I believe the word is uh, hashtag authentic yeah. <laughs> when it comes to that. So power. All right. We're going to explore sort of power and, and small business. Uh, any thoughts to kick us off? I think I was the one that had been talking about this one to you offline and you're concerned that we're not going to be able to talk about small business, which is probably fair, but something power has been something I've been thinking about. I don't know how, for how long, maybe the last couple of years is things have been exposed in the media from a power perspective. Maybe I'm getting older and understanding this stuff better and becoming more curious I actually think more and more of this is just being, uh, it's not easier to expose, but there's so many more voices out there that we're able to hear some of the uh, egregious abuses of power. But I think what really started the conversation last week where I was getting all fired up was when, so the thing with Bill Gates, right? And him and, was it Melinda? His wife, Melinda, or that they're separating and all of a sudden stuff starts trickling out about like maybe some infidelity with him, maybe some relationships with Epstein. And it just made me think about like, not not like Bill Gates is the be all and end all and not like, oh, if Bill Gates is this way, how can the world survive or He's like every man and the, like this nice guy. He does have that perception. He just like a, like a geeky, nerdy, rich billionaire. It looks like he now maybe says that he donates like half of his wealth or the majority of his wealth to charity. That's probably a different conversation. But like he has like this nice kind of squeaky clean image. And then we started to hear some other things about, like I said, infidelity and like this Epstein stuff that's going to get like – it's going to be chaotic. And then just started making me think like, how, this is like a weird rabbit hole, I suppose, but how many celebrities in, are there in the world or how many people in the world that are almost universally known? A thousand, 10,000. It's got to be closer to a thousand. Like literally like the majority of people know them. It's like a thousand people, right? Yeah. I think that's a good guess. Um, you know, it's hard to know for sure. But yeah, there's not, you know, the, the widely known people yeah, is not a, a huge list. Yeah. And how is it that the last couple of years specifically with Me Too and a lot of these other situations, you know, all of these celebrities, universally known people, Bill Gates being one of them, how is it that they're always entangled in these like awful, terrible things? Yeah. And like yeah. why are... Like, how is that even humanly possible that our, our leaders and the, the faces of like that people are so familiar with, how are they involved in these, like, I'm going to be a bit dramatic, um, evil things. If Gates is involved with Epstein, it's evil. But anyways. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, not to go down too many um, specific rabbit holes, but generally I think, you know, power corrupts. It's sort of the age old thing. I think in the old days, you know, that there's a lot of silent power. Um, now, we, when we have social media, we have more advocates. It's easier to be believed. It's easier to communicate stuff. Um, I think we're exposing how 
poor our system is for that stuff. There's not necessarily clear places to to tell your story. There's still a lot of power, um, which is why it's a fascinating topic to talk about, uh, right? There's even the uns- there's unspoken things that maybe you know we shouldn't talk about on the podcast. Now I will do it. <laughs> You know, I joke about, you know, not having a lot of friends or not worried about sort of <laughs> smashing some of those power things. But, um, you know, and I think in times where I have stood up to power or said statements, I've always made friends out of it, you know, more than I've maybe lost um, for just pointing some of those things out. But, you know, you just realize, like, there's a lot going on. There's the power corrupts. But we also love power. Um, you know, in Canada, we love dynasties. We love certain names, right? The, the Trudeaus, the Fords, the Irvings. You celebritize people sometimes. Um, you know, business it happens as well, right? Like Bill Gates, Warren Buffett. Like, you don't know that these are good people. Elon Musk, people are like tripping over themselves to like think they're, you know, brilliant and powerful, but they're not necessarily good people. Um, they abuse their power. They, you know, step on people sometimes to get where they need to go. Um, and that could be shocking to the person getting stepped on as well. You know, sometimes people think, Oh, I thought this person was a good business person. And, uh, you know, it's like, they screwed me over. Yeah. And I've always asked you, like, of course, the saying is power corrupts, but do you have to be corrupt to become powerful? Like, does is it actually the power that corrupts you or do you have to just have a general corruption in your heart and soul? To I think uh, corruption's a hard word. Mm-hmm. Um, there's corruption, there's grift, you know, greed. I think people will pursue sort of power and fame or influence sometimes with the right reasons in mind um i think you have to have some blinders on some cases because it's it's hard to be sort of woke and equal and build something in a world that's not woke and equal like at some point you're like um you're not going to be able to meet all of your sort of individual standards and values and some people just cannot see that right or cannot be blind to certain elements of it Um, so you kind of need those people ideally they're people that have a circle around them who are going to point things out to them to make things a bit better Um, but it is hard unless you know to sort of build that over time if you're not taking advantage of someone yeah, I think that there's certain industries where you can become powerful without being corrupt from the beginning or possibly never be corrupt. I think that you can reach a certain amount of revenue and wealth by never oh, yeah. being corrupt. Maybe if you're a billionaire, you may have to get your hands dirty. Where well, a, like, that actually now, like I'm realizing, like, yeah, the, the corruption is an interesting word and like what defines corruption like are you are you not killing someone <laughs> corruption like um n- n- like not literally stabbing someone in the back from a business perspective though like is that corrupt or is that like a part of just life and business um, yeah so I th- a couple things i think um where it loops to small business and why i'm a big fan of small business and also wealth creation is not inherently bad Uh, there is a saying that i like which is you know you can't make a billion dollars you can only take a billion dollars but at the same time you know a million dollars is not a lot of money um, in the grand scheme of things so like you know you can we need businesses we need people to be doing some of that you know from a corruption standpoint there's like criminal corruption and overt bribery yeah. There's also just a lot of grift. Like, you know, you look at certain politicians whose net worth wildly changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundred and fifty thousand dollar a year salary. Like, how does that magically happen? 
Um, you know, in Canada, we have a crazy problem with the impacts of money laundering, which most people are completely blind to. Like, you know, the court system is designed to protect certain people, and there's that s certain power that sort of exists. You know, so you're not going to have a world without that. Yeah, and it seems like politicians are always the ones that the power becomes corruption. And I guess it's probably more known of American politicians at this point when you're seeing them like career politicians that are millionaires and like, that's fine. They can save. Maybe they're frugal and they're getting a lot of like small handouts and free dinners and everything. And maybe they're pinching their pennies, but it's it's always fascinating to see that now of the ones that own multiple homes and a lot of money and Bernie Sanders, who I reasonably am a fan of and like the king of socialism down there. I think he's got like multiple homes, he's multi-millionaire. Like he's done well for himself too. So it's oh yeah, yeah. Everyone, it's, uh... even like the poster child for certain things uh, and anti-corruption, like. Again, like probably nothing that he did was corrupt, but like he's made a lot of money doing what he's been doing for a number of years. <laughs> oh, yeah. People. Uh, anyway, yeah, we could do a whole podcast on, on grift. I think from a small business standpoint, you know, part of it is knowing that that exists. I think a lot of people are trying to push against it. Um, I think the other opposite element of this that I think we joke about a lot is the what is power and who really has power. And I think it's small towns and small businesses. Sometimes you get people who, you know, people think are powerful mm. or they become sort of like the famous business leader. And I'm always fascinated by what that means. I know that, uh, you know, one of the terms that I use and I wasn't maybe going to say it is like, I call it the fake Lindsay elite, which <laughs> is kind of an idea more than a, a naming of names, but that's the like, oh, who are the, I hate the term, you know, the movers and shakers and the the powerful people in the community. Um, I guess one of the best things ever for my life was working at the bank for several years and seeing the reality of like people's wealth sometimes. Cause I remember being a young bright eyed person. And it's like, oh, this big business person's coming in. And then they have like literally nothing in their bank account and debt up to their ears. And you're like, how do they do it? And it's like, well, they, they don't, but everyone, there's that perception of power and influence. Um, and that's definitely, you know, happens and is ongoing. Um, but it's not always what people think it is. Yeah. And the, the Lindsay elite, I hope can summarize a number of people right? It's not like, I don't know, is there like one or two that we specifically know that you're referring to or? Yeah, I, I was thinking about that today. I'm like, there's not really names that I would specifically name in that. And it's kind of a jerk thing to say, which is kind of why I, I, I say it. Um, and sometimes it's a perception as well. Um, and one of my stories for this is I just remember one day, and this wasn't really a, um, a a Lindsay person, but someone who was referred to as like Mr. Powerful businessman. And I remember chasing them down for information because their, you know, loan was up for renewal and they had lost over a hundred thousand dollars that year. Just did that mean cash losses? No, it wasn't you. And um, the contrast to that was that very same day. I also was working with a, a, a female small business owner who coincidentally um, her father had co-signed on her loan. And when I phoned her, she was like, oh, this is the first time the bank had ever called her. They had all previous people had only called her dad about her business, <laughs> which again, gender power dynamics. She was somebody who was like, didn't think she was successful. Didn't think she was very good, but she was paying herself a living and had like a, $50,000 profit, which is an am amazing. So in my mind, I was contrasting, like if I were to put two of them up and people were to be like, oh, who's the most powerful, most knowledgeable of business? 
they would all pick the man and like the big business leader who knew everything, but they lost a hundred grand that year. And that's a lot of money in a small town, in a small business, like yeah, to just lose, to lose that. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. And I, um, my experiences are different, but similar from trying to do business with some of the Lindsay elite, where in both cases, to different degrees, two things came up, one of which was just a blatant disrespect for my beliefs and how I did things and a methodology and like kind of like a pumping of the chest of, well, I'm a Lindsay elitist. I have power. You should be doing it this way. You don't know what you're talking about, little boy. And then, and one of the, that was, that was the case in both. Um, one of which was more recent and it was not as aggressive, but still a, well, this is how I do things. So this is how you should be doing things. And I tried to explain, well, that's not really how my methodology works and how I've had success. And that didn't matter to them. Uh, and that was just basically a flex of power in my opinion. And then in the other case, again, like a, uh, a situation where this is pretty common with power. Also, if, thinking back on my career in general, where it's, it's always the dangling of the carrot where they, they know how powerful they are and what they have around them. And it's, you do this for me, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. So I need you to come in at a really, really, really cheap price because I'm going to open you up to a garden of opportunity. And it's interesting. It's probably because they're cheap and maybe that's how they accumulated wealth <laughs> by not paying yeah. for certain things. Uh, but also I just find it's, again, I, it's disrespectful also. And my experience, honestly, is I've had that happen maybe a dozen times in my life where the conversation, the sales conversation has started with, you do this for me and we'll do something more and bigger in the future. It literally has never, ever, ever, ever happened. So like yeah. you take a dive for these people because you're like, you get sucked in by their power and their influence. And you're like, oh, sweet. I'm going to have a great relationship with them. And then you never see the fruits of the labor ongoing because you were just basically sucked in. Yeah. And I think it's a, for those people, that's a cycle of what they do. They always find the, the new kid in town, underpay them. I think at the end of the day, you mentioned accumulating wealth. And this is where, again, my bank, I'm always leery of people who, flout their wealth um, yeah the wealthiest people that i know in this community who i won't point out people would not guess say I, names I, first and last I, names I, I will not do that <laughs> um, and by that i mean people have done it like on their own you know there's people who get inheritances or they get really yeah. lucky or you know there's other uh, other things but that built it on their own it's usually slow and steady um, you know, a little bit of luck. Other people who, you know, you think of accumulated wealth haven't. Um, I've had some funny stories of like, you know, partners in a business where they're co-signing on something and you, with privacy, you have to keep it separate. But at the bank, there's sort of a, a common situation, which is we can't lend them money because, you know, people don't have the backup or the wealth and you go to business partners and it's like one of you in this room has nothing at all even though you're all like you know i remember someone throwing me the keys to their jaguar um and that was literally all like a lease of that was the it was not even their asset and they had no assets at all right um, and that's not an uncommon type of type of thing um the other part on the people making those business deals is, and I know you're good about how you collect, is people will be, you know, they won't charge them up front. They'll be on the accounts receivable. Um, I, again, working at the bank is such so good for me, working with people and like seeing their accounts receivables list. And then there is a genuine power and disrespect 
people would be surprised who's on it. Mm. Um, I remember, um, you know, a business who was like, you know, this influential person in the community owed them like 50 grand and was just ignoring them. Right. And it was like, they just couldn't believe that somebody who had such a good reputation yeah. was just not paying them like a massive amount of uh, money. And that, you know, happens as well. Businesses have completely failed because they lost on big deals to people who are, you know, in theory, sort of powerful and influential and community leaders. Yeah. It's interesting. Mm. I, I, I wonder what that is. I wonder if that's them trying to flex their influence and ego and narcissism about those people are never going to narc me out or they're going to ever going to come forward and explain any of this. And I think that's the power. And that's where we're seeing it. We're in a world now where people aren't as afraid to name those names because at some point you realize, and this is again, why I wanted to talk about it in power is like, is that power real? Mm. Um, and that's where I look at, you know, people will talk about corruption or even local politicians. And to be honest, in city of Cortha Lakes, I can be as critical as any of our politicians. And I'm happy to do that in the right forum, but I don't really like the word corruption. Um, and they might be do, you know, some people might be doing things I wouldn't do. I know some are doing things I personally wouldn't do, but you know, no one's getting suitcases of millions of dollars handed um, to them. Like that power is not really there. They're not that influential, right? If you look at the people who have like, oh, I'll give you all this extra work or I'll, you know, you do this work for me and you're going to get flooded with business. You probably haven't lost good business because you didn't work with them. Um I've had one business owner threaten to like say bad things about me because I stood up to them about power dynamics and some uh, awful things, but that hasn't hurt me at all. And to be honest, I'm not afraid of that. If you don't want to do business with me because of my very strong values, like, okay, <laughs> like, yeah, I'll be okay with that. Like, you know, your power is not real. No. And especially like, I think I know you pretty well. Um, like there's no dirt on you. <laughs> like, what are they going to do? Like uh, that Brian sure does read a whole lot. I don't know if I would trust him. Like what kind of rumors are going to go around town with you? Uh, I think it honestly, it's power. People confuse power within their own business and their organization with power around their community. Because it made me think of some of like the people that I just like I'm not going to mention, but ambiguously have spoken about in UF too. Like, how many of those people do you see like really active in the community? And maybe community is a, a broad word too. But what are they doing to use that power and influence in like a beneficial way? They're only using it within their own circles and their own business corporate circles to flex their power. They're not using influence mm -hmm. and power to. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but like, what are they doing? Are they, are they going to council meetings? Are they sitting on boards and like, what are those boards? And like, are they actually the boards helping them or are they boards that are helping other people? <laughs> yeah. And I think uh, that's a good, good question. And I think the people who are doing that aren't the ones floating their power. Um, and I, you know, there's, um, someone I work on some boards with in Fenland Falls. Again, I won't mention the name, um, someone who initially I thought when I first heard of them thought they were sort of the fake powerful. Now I've come to learn they don't really think that. But then I've also learned a lot about some of the under the surface community advocating that they do. And it's incredibly impressive, like putting their money where their mouth is, grinding out all this work for no reason. They don't need to do it. So to me, that's the power I want. Like that's somebody who is kind of influential. They're probably owed a lot of favors. They've done so much behind the scenes with a, such a community mind to it to sort of maybe block some of that power type of things that can happen. 
Um, this reminds me of um, just quickly on politicians. And if you want to look at historical power, take a look at our layers and layers of bylaws and zonings. And if you'll see like, oh, this business and this lot is zoned for these activities, but this list of activities is banned. And if you look at when that came into place and like who was on council and what comp competitors would have been like oh. a lot of it's that it's like, yeah, you can have this store, but you can't sell this or you can't be a barber shop because <laughs> you know, whatever. And it's fascinating, like the land use of stuff. Yeah. Um, which again, when I was at the bank, you'd see lots of like, people trying to get financing for different purchases. And I would always love looking at that and then seeing who was around it um, because there's that ingrained systemic power of somebody protecting their, their business. In some cases it's like, Oh, I know exactly who was protecting their territory here um, or their, you know, friends. Yeah. It's interesting. I, I almost want to start a podcast like a fake podcast even to talk to some sort of psychologist about this and the dynamic of power because they're not going to talk to me just for the fun of it. So we should set yeah. up a different podcast just so I could talk to them for a couple hours because I do find this like this topic is fascinating to me. But Yeah, it's so fascinating and, you know, such small town and we talk about small town and small town po politics. If I could wrap it up with sort of one thought, you know, that would be that is that power real? and also you know challenge it you know especially small businesses you know you can do it you know you don't have to be the big powerful person you know if you're running a small profitable business like own that you you know you're good at what you do uh, all right sounds like an episode to me matt um thank you for uh, listening if you want to uh, send me some angry emails about uh uh you know, the Lindsay elite, uh, please do so at set it up at Kawartha small business podcast.ca.